In December of 1944, the American Locomotive Company celebrated the production of the last steam locomotive built for the Union Pacific Railroad. They proudly posed a company photo with all of the employees who helped bring this engine to life. It was December and a sign was placed on the locomotive stating that this was Alco's Christmas present to the Union Pacific Railroad. While other railroads were filling their rosters with diesel power, the Union Pacific opted for their very own proven designs in steam locomotion. The most recent mechanical engineering marvels were incorporated into the last 800 series of steam locomotives ordered by Union Pacific. The 800 class locomotives, also known as the Northern type, were of a 484 wheel arrangement and were delivered in three separate orders. Each order represented a different series. The first series were delivered in 1937 to replace the aging fleet of 7,000 class 482s, which were having difficulty maintaining crack schedules with longer heavyweight limiteds. The first series, the FEF1s, were numbered 800 through 819, had 77 inch diameter drive wheels, weighed over 831,000 pounds, and were over 111 feet long. The second series, the FEF2s, were delivered in 1939. These and the third series were to be larger than the first series models. They sported 80-inch diameter drive wheels, a large combined single sand and steam dome atop the boiler, and a massive seven-axle centipede style tender. The 844 is the last locomotive of the third series. It weighs over 900,000 pounds, is over 114 feet long, and over 16 feet high. Its 80-inch drivers and 300 pounds per square inch boiler pressure produces around 4,000 horsepower. At full throttle, its 8 foot by 12 and a half foot firebox can consume between 7 and 25 gallons of oil per mile and evaporate between 100 and 200 gallons of water in the same distance. 844's huge tender carries 6,200 gallons of number 5 heavy oil and 23,500 gallons of water. The 800 class locomotives were designed to maintain speeds of 110 miles per hour. At Jacinto, Nebraska, one 800 class locomotive was recorded at a speed of 124 miles per hour pulling a fast limited passenger train. During the 1950s, diesels began taking over the passenger duties, and the 800s were reassigned to freight service. Once again, they displayed their superior design, hauling mile-long freight trains at speeds exceeding 60 miles per hour. In July of 1959, the Union Pacific discontinued steam operations and over the next three years retired the entire steam fleet. That is except for two locomotives, the 844 and 4664 Challenger, number 3710. They were retained for snow melting experiments, with the 844 being stationed in Council Bluffs, Iowa. That's right, the 844 was never retired from the Union Pacific's locomotive roster. No other American steam locomotive in operation today can make that claim. 844 was destined to become a public relations tool and has represented the railroad throughout the system for over 36 years. This is more than twice the length of time it spent in regular service. It should be noted that although the 844 began its official second life in 1960, it actually pulled its first excursion special in June of 1958. 844 was pulled from the ready track in Green River, Wyoming and assigned to a westbound excursion special. Little did the passengers on that special realize that this locomotive would still be around today, performing the chores of public relations and pulling excursion specials. In 1960, the snow melting experiment ended with the 844. After some work was done on it in Omaha, it was sent west to Cheyenne on November 11th, pulling a Pacific fruit train. On November 20th, the 844 officially began its post-era duties and pulled a Rocky Mountain Railroad Club excursion to Rollins, Wyoming. Word spread among rail fan groups that the Union Pacific had retained the 844 and additional trips were soon scheduled. It seems that many of those early trips favored Rollins as the turnaround point. In 1962, the railroad purchased a group of GP30 diesel locomotives from EMD. These were numbered in the 800 series. 
One of these was numbered 844. Therefore, an extra 4 was added to the 484's number, making it the 8444. During the following years, the Big Alco would perform numerous assignments for the Union Pacific and, with its new number, became the most famous and well-traveled steam locomotive in the post-steam era. In 1981, the 8444 was joined by a Challenger-class locomotive, number 3985, after its successful restoration by a group of Union Pacific employees. Together, they traveled to Sacramento, California, to participate in the grand opening ceremonies of the California State Railroad Museum. It was billed as Railfare 81. In 1984, the engine traveled to New Orleans to become a part of the Union Pacific's display at the World's Fair. In 1987, the steam crew and a few members of the 3985 Restoration Committee painted the 8444 in two-tone gray. This was the color of the post-war passenger trains of the 40s and early 50s. Then, in 1989, the GP30 diesel, which carried the 8444's original number, was retired. And at last, the number 844 was once again returned to its rightful owner. Join us now as we travel along with 844 as it performs its duties as the Union Pacific's Ambassador of Public Relations. Such duties as the railroad's representative at the 1989 edition of the annual Railroad Day celebration in Topeka, Kansas. The standard practice of the steam program, when not pulling passenger equipment, is to haul freight to and from scheduled assignments to help assist with train braking. The Union Pacific Steam Program has always been a favorite of the rail fan organizations interested in sponsoring excursions. The Intermountain Chapter of the National Railway Historical Society chartered this round trip special between Cheyenne and Denver in the fall of 1989. The railroad occasionally operates a special, which runs from North Platte to Omaha, Nebraska, in conjunction with the River City Roundup celebration. This time, arrangements were made for busloads of school children to ride the special between stops. This, coupled with the opportunity for many to see a live steam locomotive, have made this train a favorite among the local residents. In June of 1990, the 844 traveled to St. Louis, Missouri and participated in that year's NRHS annual convention. Arrangements are often made for organizations to sponsor excursions during the trips to and from scheduled events. The St. Louis to Kansas City portion of the return trip to Cheyenne was sponsored by the Smoky Hill Railway and Historical Society. As an added bonus, the former Frisco Railroad locomotive number 1522 joined the special as far as its home, the Museum of Transport at Barrett's in the western St. Louis suburbs.
While the steam locomotives of the Union Pacific do draw large crowds, it is the railroad's collection of fine passenger cars, which allows them to ride in the utmost comfort. The entire fleet of passenger cars has been extensively rebuilt and the results allow the railroad to stand alone as the best operator of first-class passenger specials. In October of 1990, Abilene, Kansas held a celebration commemorating the 100th birthday of Dwight D. Eisenhower. The Union Pacific was proud to send the 844 as their representative to pull World War II veterans to the celebration. In May of 1991, the 844 again teamed up with the 3985 to make the trip back to Sacramento for the 10th anniversary ceremonies of the California State Railroad Museum, this time called Railfare 91. Note that on this trip, a 460 locomotive number 1243 mounted on a flat car was taken along for display. Built in 1890, the 10-wheeler traveled around the system during 1990 and 1991 and is now a part of the Union Pacific Collection at the Western Heritage Museum in Omaha, Nebraska. In October of 1991, the 844 was scheduled to pull a series of excursions out of Omaha and Grand Island, Nebraska. Once again, this sleek speed queen was assigned to a freight manifest while en route to its destination. This 5,290 ton drag truly tested the 63,800 pounds of tractive effort exerted by the giant 484's 80 inch drive wheels as it assaulted the grade of Archer Hill east of Cheyenne. Occasionally, the Union Pacific Railroad will utilize its steam program at employee functions. The Employees Club Special is a train operated annually for retired and active employees to travel to the convention. This year, the 844 was doing the honors with the 1991 edition of the special as it approached Elkhorn, Nebraska. On October 12th, the Great Plains chapter of the NRHS sponsored an excursion between Grand Island and Valley, Nebraska. On October 20th, the Omaha-based Camarail Club sponsored the last excursion the 844 pulled in the two-tone gray paint scheme. Its destination was Marysville, Kansas.
excursions, special events, fundraisers, employee functions, and other public relations duties are the main assignments performed by the Union Pacific STEAM program. On October 21, 1991, through the efforts of Harold Jones, special arrangements were made for five-year-old James Owens to ride in the cab of the 844 from Marysville to Minokin Junction, Kansas. Young James had been diagnosed with terminal cancer and one of his last wishes was to ride in the cab of a train locomotive. Not only did his wish come true, it came true in the cab of a real live steam locomotive. The 844 returned to Cheyenne on October 23, 1991. That winter, a major overhaul of the 1944 veteran was begun. The drive wheels were removed and sent to Strasburg, Pennsylvania to receive new tires, wheel truing, and quartering. The boiler was stripped of its lagging and the appliances were removed for rebuilding. Those items which were not rebuildable were replaced with new units built off Union Pacific's blueprints from scratch. The superheaters, flues, and tubes were removed from the boiler superstructure. The front and rear flue sheets were then ground and trued. New two and one half inch tubes were swedged and prepped for installation. They were then installed in the boiler with the aid of a forklift. Next, they were rolled and sealed to the flue sheets and the boiler was given a hydro test. The pilot and trailing trucks were rebuilt, including new springs and related hardware. The frame was completely overhauled with new springs, shoes, wedges, and associated parts. The drive wheels and appliances were installed, and the new locomotive boiler lagging was applied. Then, in the spring of 1996, the firebox was relit, and the Big Northern was moved around under its own steam for the first time in four and a half years. Next, the 844 was given a coat of primer and two coats of glossy black Imron paint. The smoke box and firebox exteriors were coated with a heat-resistant graphite colored paint. The locomotive was then moved from the roundhouse to the main shop to be lettered and numbered. In June, the 844 made a successful test run down the Greeley subdivision to LaSalle, Colorado and back. On July 20th, the high driver Speedster was assigned to assist the 3985 Challenger on the return trip to the Mile High City with the Denver Post Cheyenne Frontier Day Special. The two Alcos put on an impressive show as they charged west out of Cheyenne late that afternoon. On August 22nd, the 844 was departing North Platte en route to Council Bluffs with the support cars and a short freight train. On the morning of August 24th, the 450-ton steamer was in charge of a Cedar Rapids bound special sponsored by the Pacific Limited Group.
This special is actually on the first leg of its two-day journey to Chicago and was called the Iowa 400. The next morning, the special departed Cedar Rapids in the spectacular view over the Cedar River. On the 31st of August, the 844 was in charge of a round-trip excursion between Chicago and Milwaukee, sponsored again by the Pacific Limited Group. On September 2nd, the high-stepping 484 headed west out of Chicago, bound for Clinton, Iowa. On September 7th, the Pacific Limited Group sponsored yet another excursion, this one between Des Moines and Boone, Iowa, in conjunction with the annual Pufferbilly Days celebration.
On September 8th, the 844 was heading west towards home on the first leg of its three-day journey to Cheyenne. It hauled the deadhead passenger cars to Council Bluffs, Iowa, where they are maintained. The next day, the Northern had gained the E-9B unit 963B, along with the freight consist. The E unit was being sent to Cheyenne for its annual inspection. On the third and final day of the journey, the DDA 40X number 6936 also joined the consist out of North Platte, Nebraska. You can bet this unique power lash-up turned more than a few heads along the way. In October, the 844 traveled east with the E units to Missouri, Illinois, and Arkansas to pull a series of excursions. We see the impressive consist winding its way east through western Missouri. On October 24th, the 844-led special departed St. Louis, crossing the ever-present MacArthur Bridge into Illinois with the Southern Scenic Special. This series of specials concluded the 1996 steam excursion program and the 844 heads west towards Cheyenne for the winter. It had been a great season, and the 52-year-old 844 was operating beyond expectations. The four-and-a-half-year overhaul was a success, and its dividends were clearly visible. The locomotive was operating magnificently as it charged through Big Springs, Nebraska on the final leg of its journey home.
As the final miles rolled beneath the balanced precision of the massive 484's 80-inch drive wheels, the crew began to reflect with pride in the knowledge that the past four years were more than paying for themselves. A spectacular climax to the steam season occurred on that November 4th afternoon. The westbound NPST manifest had stalled on the westbound grade near Burns, Wyoming, 24 miles east of Cheyenne. The 844 was right on the tail of the stalled drag, and a decision was made to assist the freight up the hill the remaining miles to the summit. The NPST, with the help of the 1944 steamer, got underway as an eastbound hotshot zipped by on the south track. The stack talk was awesome as the might of 300 pounds of superheated steam shoved hard on the rear of the 11,620 ton freight.
At the summit of Archer, the 844 was uncoupled from the rear of the freight, and the steam powerhouse triumphantly continued the final six miles into Cheyenne. What a way to end the season. The half-century-old Alco just helped keep one of the busiest main lines in the world open, and the dispatchers in Omaha knew it. Once again, the venerable 844 has demonstrated why many feel that the Union Pacific's 484s were one of the finest examples of steam power ever produced. With the success of the recently completed overhaul, this grand old lady of the high iron will continue to fulfill its duties as the ambassador of Union Pacific's public relations. Thank you.